third week of Advent, and we are just managing, aren't we? We're just doing the very best we can every single day, taking it one day at a time. And one of my favorite introits is one that's not in this particular hymnal, but it goes, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can see his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the touch of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I did a special welcome today to the Reverend Steve Hoffman and Steve, I just feel remiss because I usually try to get a whole bio about everybody and we had a little trouble finding each other in the last couple of days and um, so I didn't want to have to call you back so I'll tell you what I know about Steve he's highly recommended by Gary Hudson who was the chaplain before here he spoke to us last year and when I found it about the first month or so when I had first gotten here and I really appreciated his sense of humor. And someone said, oh, I'm so happy Steve is coming. He's fun. <laughs> and so other than that, I hope that Steve, you will fill us in on who you are behind that masked man. <laughs> and um, part of being in church, part of worship is fun. One, I think it's fun to worship. It's fun to sing to the glory of God. Yes, we're reverend, but we also have to remember that God had a sense of humor because God made all of us. So that's supposed to be funny. Really. <laughs> it is. And through one of our Southminster residents, Richard Anderson, who many of you know, he was able to gain through his persuasive powers, gain permission for us to sing once again during Advent. So uh, we are going to actually sing, but there's a caveat. We are to sing softly. And um, so we will do that. Um, there's a, there should be a hymnal in the back of your chair. If you need help with that, I will help you with it. Um, and we are going to sing, What Child Is This? It's on page 150, uh, here, here. Oh, okay. verses 1 and 2. <laughs> Thank you very much. What number? What number? 150, verses 1 and 2. Repeat that. 150.
Jeff will get the hang of this after all. So I just have a few announcements to make. Uh, on this upcoming Friday, December 18th, if you haven't already signed up, then you can watch the service of remembrance for those residents who have walked the journey with us and whose physical bodies have died. That will be this, this Friday at three o'clock and you can watch it on QB, your iPad or on the computer. So there's a um, reminder announcements in the back here. Also on um, this upcoming Sunday will be the fourth Sunday of Advent and Richard Anderson will be leading that at 11 o'clock here. In addition, he's also leading a Christmas Eve service at 7 p.m. and at 8, 8 p.m. 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. Um, so, any other announcements we need to know about at this time? If not, then I would like to share with you a Christmas poem that I found. I believe it's actually a hymn or it's a poem that was made into a hymn. If you ever have the time and you want to see more than just hymns, this book has a lot of <coughs> prayers in it as, as well as very uh, poems, things that are really of interest. And this is called The Hands That First Held Mary's Child. The hands that first held Mary's <coughs> child were hard from working wood. From boards they sawed and planed and filed, and splinters they withstood. This day they gripped no to tool of steel, they drove no iron nail, but cradled from the head to heel our Lord, newborn and frail. When Joseph marveled at the size of that small breathing frame and gazed upon those bright new eyes and spoke the infant's name, the angel's words he once had dreamed poured down from heaven's height, and like the host of stars that beamed, blessed earth with welcome light. This child shall be Emmanuel, not God upon the throne, but God with us, Emmanuel, as close as blood and bone. The tiny form in Joseph's palms confirmed what they had heard. And from his heart rose hymns and songs <coughs> from heaven's human word. The tools which Joseph laid aside a mob would later lift and use with anger, fear, and pride to crucify God's gift. Let us, O oh Lord, not only hold the child who's born today, but charged with faith may we be bold to follow in his way. We will now have a time of silence to pray for, to God in our own way, and then we will end with a prayer of the community and for the community. God, you tell us where two or more are gathered, that you are with us. Emmanuel, God, indeed, is with us. May we feel that presence here at this time and place, this third week in Advent. May we be still and know that you are our God. May these words give us solace and hope, comfort, and yes, even joy in a time where there is much darkness. And 
there is much to suffer. Please be with the family of Christine Haynes, who had been a resident here for only 33 days and embraced health care when she died over the weekend. Please be with our neighbor and our friend, Barbara Burns, as she is under hospice care at this time and whose family covets our prayers at this time as well. We pray for the walls beyond these. We pray that we will care for those who are cold and hungry and those who do without. Most of all, this Christmas season, O oh God, may compassion be born in our hearts anew, more fervent and more passionate than ever before. May we learn love, your love, through every breath that we take and through every action. May we not only believe in the Christ, may we be followers of Christ and do the good things that he has done. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Hear us as we pray. Hear our supplications, our intercessions, our laments, and our praises. For you, indeed, are our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, I'm the same person that left you June 30th, 2013. However, a little bit more heavier in weight. <laughs> so I'm growing in knowledge, experience, physical too. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for taking time to come during this, <clears throat> excuse me, Advent season. This season, a very special season for perhaps all of us, I hope, because it is a reminder of really the, the peace, the joy, the hope that we can know in and through our Lord, in and through the people that have taught us through the years, that have been kind reminders through the years, that you need to learn how to love. You need to learn how to share hope. You need to learn, and I need to learn, and we all need to learn how to share peace on this earth. It's an ongoing effort. It just doesn't happen during Advent. You know that. It just doesn't happen then. But it happens then. I've chosen to read scripture from Luke. The two birth narratives that we know about, really, Matthew and Luke. The oldest gospel, Mark, really does not have a birth narrative. Neither does the gospel of John. Mark was written probably in the 30s, so it's the earliest gospel. And John's one of the latest, like in the 80s. And Paul, writing in the 50s, said little about the birth of Jesus, though he does make a comment about it. So we should be thankful that in Luke chapter 2, and I'm reading from, really, from a Bible that's kind of worn out. <laughs> this is my duct tape Bible patched together. It's the King James, and I love the story in the King James Version. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph, Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth 
into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. And in verse 13, And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men, women, children, humanity, the earth, a blessing, a big blessing for us. I hope you're able to experience a blessing, not just now, but I hope you're able to experience a blessing every day. Sometimes we have to turn off the switch that might say a little bit of negative thought and turn on the positive switch and say, Lord, this is your day, and I'm in this day, and I want to know you, and I want to be with you, and I plan to do what I can do to let your name and your love be known. That's so important. Now, we know that in the Gospel of Matthew, the angel actually comes to Joseph. It's a little different. But in Luke, the angel comes to Mary. And Mary offers that nurturing spirit of love, that warmth, that comfort, that abiding love, if you please, to the baby and to mankind and womankind, we find that it's, it is so important to realize a birthday, Jesus is born, a real life human being, <clears throat> a person who will grow and experience a Jewish homeland and Jewish culture and the oppressiveness the hatred, the domination system of Rome. Can you imagine growing up in that time and Mary and Joseph are protecting all they can and then saying, what's going to happen to us, let alone the baby? We live in a fearsome time. It's troublesome. Joseph, what are we going to do? And I can imagine in my own mind's eye, Joseph really beginning to say, Mary, we have come through a lot of trial and tribulation already. And we are going to get through this with the Lord's help. God is going to bring to you and to me the service, the strength, the compassion, the wherewithal, if you please, to live your life day by day, one day at a time. You probably are very familiar with uh, the song, Mary, Did You Know? I'm not going to sing that, of course, but <laughs> I'm going to read some of it to you, the lyrics. This was really written by Green Lee Rufus and Laurie Mark Allen. I think you'll recognize it. 
Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and our daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? The child that you have delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? <clears throat> did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. I want to share with you a brief story that's true, but also to share with you a point at the end. It is taken from a book, Spirit Song, My Life as a Poem by Joan LaFleur. I want to tell you a little bit about Joan LaFleur. Joan LaFleur, in her 30s, was writing poetry, and she taught school French and English as a second language for over 30 years in mostly public schools in North Carolina. When Joan LaFleur retired from teaching after 30 years, shortly thereafter she had a stroke <laughs> and was confined to a wheelchair. Can you imagine the disappointment, the heartaches, the broken dreams, the promises that just seem to evaporate, gone? I'm ready to retire. I'm ready to travel. I want to go to France. I want to taste again that French cuisine. I want to talk to the French people, fluent in French, teaching school for more than 30 years. And then out of a suddenness, a stroke, paralyzed her. She now lives at Mary Wood on Park Road. And she has been there for a number of years. I got to know Joan really through St. John's Baptist Church when she was teaching a class there to adults. When my wife and family and I came to St. John's. She was teaching a Sunday school class, and they invited us in. And I can still see her like standing there in all of her beauty, in all of her grace, and she is talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus. And that just stuck with me. I have mentioned it to her several times in the past years, and she is so gracious, but she has gone through so much heartache, so much disappointment. Her two sons live out of the state of North Carolina, and they see her when they can, hopefully, during the holidays. Joan's a poetry writer. She has several books, and this book really, that I'm going to read from, Spirit Song, is about a student. Joan taught high school at South Mech High School across the street. She wrote this poem in 2011, and she wrote it for a particular person, Louis Laredo. What I did for love of a student, she says. I tried to warn him he seemed to listen. Was, was that a smile? Was that a smirk? I'm not sure. In one year, 
transformed from former good boy. I tried to tell him someone else spoke louder, drowned out other voices he heard. We had not given up. Just days before he did it, his brain, which couldn't memorize the rules, could figure out a way to lie and to steal. Could think it didn't matter. I tried to explain to him. There was no second chance. A triple whammy. Jail. Detention. Deportation. I tried to teach him. The law did too. What he learned is all he has now. The postscript. This poem is for Louis Laredo from Mrs. Lafleur. Good luck, Louis. I hope you will learn more and have a good life. Be brave and honest always. Adios. What a remarkable gift to be able to put that in words. As a high school teacher, really teaching second, English as a second language and French for so many years, and writing a poem about a student whom she cared about, not just her, but others at South Neck. And they tried to guide this young person in a more direct and more important way it just didn't seem to work out like that i asked john recently I, recently have you heard from Lewis? she said no i haven't i haven't but the story still stand, stands i wish you to be brave i wish you to be happy i wish you to be strong i wish you to find the rules that really make life Better, interesting, happier, joyous, kind, clean, as a way to say, Lord, take care of Lewis. Wherever Lewis is, wherever he is doing good things or bad things, Lord, he is an important person to me and to so many others. And we care about each other. All of us, we care what happens to us. And that's one of the greatest gifts that God could give us. Our hearts do cry. Our hearts do become sometimes so burdened and so filled with pain and yet when that is lifted, we find that God is still God with us in the pain, with us in the joy, and with us really in the peace that will surpass and pass all understanding. Peace is yours. Peace is mine. Peace is given. It is a given to you. It is an important gift, this gift of hope, this gift really of love, this gift of joy, and this gift of peace. Through the Christ child, through the Christ child, and in the Christ child, and in the Messiah. Amen.
sacred place to other sacred places. May you go in peace. May you go in joy. May you go with the fruit of the Spirit that will enliven you, enliven me, and enliven us. Not just during Christmas, but during Christmas as well. May the gift of the Spirit be yours. May we know and experience this tremendous faith in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. amen. I want to thank Steve for coming with us today. That uh, I love to hear him talk. He used to be with us many years ago here at South. Yeah, 1895, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, go to the back so everybody can greet you, sweetheart, as you go out. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe it was 1896. Here I am born. <laughs> Take care. Okay, well, you too. I'm glad you're up and out.